Hey everybody, how you doing today? This is Steve with South Carolina Bushcraft. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is I picked me a spot kind of out here in the woods a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up a plow point shelter. It should only take me about maximum of about 10 minutes to set this up. Um, I've already got my tarp laid out. So the first thing you have to remember let me go ahead and carry you over here and you can see what I'm actually talking about. All right, so here we go. Here's my tarp. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lay your tarp out in a diagonal fashion. So it's a little windy, so I'm fighting the wind a little bit today, but that's okay. Because that's what this shelter is designed to do is combat wind all right so so now i've got my tarp laid out in somewhat of a diamond fashion and you'll see what i'm talking about all right so if you look straight ahead that little pine tree that little sapling right there what i'm going to do is i'm going to use that to attach the front of the tarp all right so i'm going to put you back on the tri uh the tripod and then we're gonna go from there. I just wanna make sure you got a good angle and you can actually see what I'm doing. Sun might be a little bit of a problem, but I really hope not. All right, so that's probably about the best that I'm gonna get. All right, so I got my tree right here that I'm going to be attaching everything to. So on one corner of my tarp, I've already got a string tied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about shoulder height. And I'm going to set this tarp. I'm going to wrap it. I'm just going to wrap it as close as I can get it to the tree. It really doesn't matter where it's at. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to bring it out a little bit just to make, for sake of argument, make it a little bit easier. I'm not really worried about that tarp blowing around. It's not that big of a deal. that good and tight so it gets a bite on the tree and then I'm gonna go wrap it around the rope and go the other way now what this is gonna do it's gonna form basically a jam knot so the string don't move on me when I pull it out so I'm just gonna run that through run that through I'm just gonna give it a wrap around the tree a couple of times, just enough to secure it and keep it snug. And then I'll tie it off. And what I'll do to tie it off is, I'll just double up on the rope. Cause this will make it very easy. Create me a little, a little long loop with a tail. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do, however, is tie me a little granny knot slip knot. That'll keep the rope tight to where I need it. That way it's not going nowhere. All right, so it's gonna take a minimum of three stakes that I've already cut. So I've already got the front portion tied. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that back corner. I'm gonna walk it out and get it as tight as I can. And then we're gonna hammer a stake in the ground.
Get my little axe here. My little tiny Bushman axe. So again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find that center, that opposite corner of the diamond. And you're going to walk that out as tight as you can get it. Then you're gonna put a stake. This is fairly tight as you can get. I got a little bit of resistance from the tree, but that's okay. Now my stakes are a little bit longer than what they should be because I'm hammering in the sand. So I want to make sure that I've got a good amount of distance in the ground to keep that good, tight, and secure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull one of the corners out I'm gonna stake it in the ground. So I'll find my other corner. Take that in the ground. Then I'll go over to the other side and I'll find the opposite corner and I'll stake that into the ground. All right, so once you've got that staked into the ground, and I'll give you an idea of what that looks like from the back, and then you'll definitely see why they call it a plow point shelter. All right, so from the back, what you're looking at here, you're looking at one opposite corner and then the corner tied to the tree. All right, then you got the opposite end staked and you got the other side staked. So what that does is, is that protects you from the front, from the side, from the front and both sides. And you've still got ample amount of space underneath. So it's a very good shelter for your fall, your rainy weather, and especially in winter because I can stand right here and I could probably right about here where I'm standing now from this portion of the shelter itself, I could build me a fire either here or over there. I could build me a fire. I could build me a little reflector wall and this will hold the heat as the fire, the wall is reflecting the heat of the fire back into the shelter. Now, what that's really doing is you are taking advantage of the natural radiation, which is the heat waves bouncing off of the wall behind the fire, bouncing back into the shelter. You're taking advantage of the heat waves of that and you're taking advantage of um, convection, which is as the hot air moves around the tent, it's gonna keep it at a pretty good temperature. So it's really not bad. Um, like I said, I really like this shelter. Now it's only taking me about, with talking, about 10 minutes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to 
put my gear inside there. That way you can kind of see just what we're really working with. <clears throat> All right, so I can put my gear inside. My gear's stowed away. It's out of the elements. I don't have to worry about none of my stuff getting wet. So basically what we're looking at here is my shelter, as far as shelter goes, I am actually in pretty good shape. And when it comes to shelter, that's really what's important. Now, I could have went up a little bit higher with this if I wanted to, but I'm not worried about it because I do have, if you look back here, you're gonna see they got a little bit of sag going on, but I could easily find a small pine cone, a small rock, um, I round over a stick if I really wanted to, and I could actually put that, wrap that up in the tarp before I set it up, and then I could pull that back and tie it off to a tree behind me, and that'll give that a little bit more stable, and I could raise it up a little bit to get a little bit more room. But in this case, I'm not worrying about it because I've got a pretty good overhang right here in front of me that's setting down I can't even hardly reach. So, you know, that's, that's just great for me. Um, if it starts raining, I'm protected on three sides. You always want to make sure that you set your, whether it's any type of a tarp shelter, you want the back of it facing the wind. So the back of your shelter takes the brunt of most of the wind. And if it was to start raining and the wind start blowing rain, shoot, I could crawl right back in here. I could lay down, I could relax and I wouldn't have to worry about getting wet. Um, that's why it's really nice to have, you know, a shelter like this. Now there's many different ways that you can set up a tarp shelter. For me, some of the easiest ones is either a lean-to with a um, kind of a, not your typical lean-to where it's just flat on the back edge, but <clears throat> a lean-to whereas it is, um, you know, it's got a overhang to protect and shed water when you're setting up. Now the area that I walked through, if you remember on the first video, I talked about finding resources as you're wandering. So I came upon a waterfall. So I had collected some water and then my intention was to really come out here and set up a camp, something I would use for an overnight fashion or something that I would use even on a semi-permanent, especially if I was going to be going back to the same place, um, like when I go um, hunting or fishing. Sometimes it'll be easier for me just to take a tarp and just be done with it and not have to worry about a tent, a stove. I carry everything I need in here. Everything I need will be in this backpack and this little shoulder bag. And I'll go over that on another video, probably tomorrow evening or something like that. I'll go over how I got this set up because I pretty much got everything set up to where what I need is important is in, is in the small shoulder bag and the backpack carries a lot of my tools. Now, the only thing I do have that when I go over the kit, you'll, ask, you'll probably ask yourself, well, why don't you have just one? Um, I've got a cup and two water bottles. And the reason that is, is simply because um, when I was at Walmart, I was looking for a stainless steel water bottle that was 32 ounces so I could boil water. Well, the one, unfortunately, that I chose, I didn't really read it very well and didn't pay attention to it. So what I got stuck with was a doubled wall vacuum sealed stainless steel container, which is not a good idea if you want to use that in a fire. You know, it can cause it to rupture. It can even cause it to just, you know, pretty much blow out. Um, so that wouldn't be something that I would use to boil the water in. But however, 
it is a good idea to have it just to transport water. I'm not I won't be worried about cross contamination because I'm not going to be drinking out of it. So I don't have to worry about getting sick because I'm not going to be direct, uh, directly drinking from that source. Mainly what I'm going to be doing is using that to carry water so I can put that water into either my um, stainless steel cup and boil it or a small 16 ounce stainless steel water bottle. In which cases what I would probably do is if I knew I was, for example, if I was traveling, I would go ahead and fill up that 16 ounce. That way that, that water you know, can boil. Um, and I'd fill up my cup. Of course, I'm naturally, no, if you know me, you're going to know that I have coffee pretty much all the time. So before I would leave camp, I'd have coffee. <coughs> so I would use up most of the water that I have. And if my water source is pretty close, then it's not that big of an issue because I can just go back and fill up the bottle again. And I can have my coffee and I can already have um, water that is drinkable. I'll go more over water purification in another video, but I will have drinkable water that I can drink on the go. And I'll have a 32 ounce container full of water that I can boil if I need to start a fire and hydrate. Because all that takes is just a matter of, you know, doesn't depending on your altitude, it really doesn't take a whole lot of time to get water to a boil. The center of disease control really state that for water to be safe for human consumption, 500, feet above sea level or below, you only have to bring it to a rolling boil. Anything after a rolling boil is just going to be water evaporating because it's turning into steam and you're going to have a loss of resource. So again, I'll go into more of this when I talk about, you know, re gathering natural resources and water procurement and things like that. Um, but to make it safe, you're always going to want to remember filter and then boil. That's going to be the only way the water is really going to be able to be safe for human consumption. Um, but as you can see, this was basically about setting up a quick shelter. And I mean, it's, it's really roomy. I've got a lot of room. I mean, I put my feet down there. Shoot, I lay right there. I mean, I could easily fit two to three people in this design of a shelter. And especially if I was to do something to stop the sagging so much. And actually give it a little bit more headroom. I could tie it off right about here where I'm at. And that'll make it a lot more tighter. And I mean, it would shed water very well. And it would there would be there's enough room in here for two people very comfortably. And even three people if it gets tight. So you know, again, going back to the shelter theory, my feeling on shelter is this plow point is the easiest way to go if you want to guarantee to be covered with the max of three sides. And I mean, if I wanted to, you know, the only other thing you would need to really do is um, I would lay in some type of a debris bed um, that would get me off of the ground. And I do in my back, uh, in my backpack, I do have a vapor or moisture barrier that I would put down um, on top of, um, you know, I, I would do my debris bed and then I would do, or I, I, more than likely what I probably do is my moisture barrier, my debris bed, and then my sleeping um, equipment that I have. So I'm not going to keep you all too long. I did just want to really just mainly show that it only takes a few minutes to really set up this type of a shelter. And when you're dealing with a either one, a survival situation, or you're really dealing with, you know, some type of a woodscraft or a bushcraft type thing, then this is going to be, you know, one of the best ones to use because at that point, it's really all about your quick up and your quick down. How fast can I get the system set up? so it's usable and how fast can I tear it down so I you know when it comes time or if I got to move or when it comes time for me to move you know so just kind of keep that in mind um, we'll talk more about the kit later on I'll probably do something tomorrow before I go to work about what's in my kit and we'll start breaking that kit down into you know five key essential items that you should have all right and again I'm gonna go ahead and call this video done 
I do appreciate you know you watching the video. If you have any questions, any comments, I'm always open for any you know constructive criticism or anything like that. You know, just keep in mind that this is the first time that I've tried to do any type of really video on this, um, and so I'm new to the video, so I know I may ramble a little bit, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to get the point across, you know, just to kind of share the joy of being able to do some bushcraft camping, um, some bare minimum style low footprint camping and hiking. That way you don't have to worry about carrying a lot of equipment because for me that that's get, that's the fun of it is getting back to the root of things you know so settlers have done it for years um frontiersmen you know all that they've all done it um so you know just just keep all that in mind when you're watching my videos and i hope you're having just as much fun watching these as i am as actually doing them as it, they're very fun it's educational for everybody and again like i said if you've got some things that you feel would be beneficial please feel free to share, comment. I look forward to it. And again, this is Steve with South Carolina Bushcraft. I will talk to y'all later. We'll see you next time. You have a good day.